My name is Howard Menneker. Chris Mason Hale. Steve Ritterbush. Marshall Garber. I was injured by a compression on my spinal cord. Playing football. As a result of back surgery. Falling down the basement stairs. The accident was surreal. Life changing. I'm just like you. I'm just like you. Except I can't stand and walk. So they put me in a middle linebacker, and the holes open up, and I see this huge guy. And our heads collide, and like the sound was, it was deafening. When our heads hit, he went through me, my body went numb, and I kind of just fell to the ground. And I remember my coaches coming over with this really uh, morbid look on their face. And once I saw the face, it kind of confirmed what I had already thought had happened, that I had probably broken my neck. I went in for routine back surgery, and six weeks later, instead of getting better, I was completely paralyzed from the waist down. I missed a step, and I pitch pulled about 15 feet under my forehead. When my neighbor came in, the only thing I said to him is, John, I'm so screwed. I knew it right away. When I was 15 years old, I had a spinal epidural mass um, form on my spinal cord, which left me paralyzed after an emergency surgery. I was thrown into a world that I never knew even existed. Every single function of every single day changes. You can't stand up, you can't get in and out of bed, you can't brush your teeth. And so the impact is pretty devastating. It wasn't until my aunt came in and she gave me uh, a PSP, because I love to play video games, and she gave me this PSP and I, I couldn't hold it. The things that make me who I am, I may not be able to do anymore, so how do I put myself back together after a moment like that? That was, I had no answers. You start out and you're like a um, one-year-old child, you know, literally in a you know 70-year-old body, it's frightening. My own house became like this alien place. It's amazing how much higher things look. I mean, obviously I'm sitting down, but like I didn't think that my cabinets were so tall or that my cups were so far away from me that I couldn't really reach them. How do you do everything that you've always done sitting down? Nothing is easy and nothing is natural. To be out one day, extremely active, being able to do anything you want, and all of a sudden to be basically encased in this shell that doesn't work anymore, it's a life-changing experience. And you sit there and you say, all right, I've got this disability now. What am I going to do about it? And how can I get out of it? Can I work my way out of this? When I got home, I realized that that wasn't enough, that there's definitely more that I could do. And that's when I came here to Kennedy Krieger. And that's when they started working on everything. Kennedy Krieger is different from most rehabilitation hospitals in that we're really progressive in our thinking. We believe that recovery is possible and that recovery is activity dependent. It's our aim to get people moving up and out of their wheelchairs and helping them to accomplish things they didn't think they could otherwise do. They give you the hope by encouraging you and then you do it and then they encourage you to do the next step. And that makes a big difference in your recovery. When you believe it, because they believe it, then you can do it. The exoskeleton is a really great robotic device that allows a person who isn't able to walk to get up and walk and take steps. 
The exoskeleton was originally developed to assist the military in soldiers carrying extensive loads over long distances. It was then repurposed for spinal cord injuries to help in spinal cord rehabilitation. The EXO is a wearable robot. It sort of fits around your legs, and then once you get up, it helps you walk. When I first got into the exoskeleton, it made me stand up straight. It was kind of like being held by somebody you trust. Once I got strapped in and I got everything adjusted and they encouraged me to stand up, the feeling was absolutely unbelievable. This was that moment when I knew I could stand up again and I could begin to move my legs to walk. And it said to me, that was gonna happen on my own someday. When you get to stand up and take these perfect steps, it's a, a relief that is undescribable. It's, it's a eureka moment. It's one of the greatest things for a person with a spinal cord injury to be able to stand up next to their peers, next to their therapist especially when they've been told for so long and so often that they'll never do it again. Being primarily in the chair, I don't get to stand up much unless I'm here. So when I do get to stand, it reminds me of uh, Star Wars, kind of, like when uh, Darth Vader's coming up for the first time and before he takes his first breath, it's like, this feels right, you know? Just like I'm hovering over people. It's not so much a power thing, but just the idea of like sitting all the time and then like being tall like I used to be, like I used to look over everybody before. So being back to that, when I get to come here, is it's, it's a great feeling. And as I stood up straight and tall again, I go, damn, I forgot how tall I was. Don't look down, right? Don't look down. Basically being able to look people in the eye and to be able to stand again was a real joy. The exoskeleton is beneficial for a lot of therapeutic reasons. It's important that people stand in order to keep their bones strong and prevent them from getting fractures. The movements of walking, that alternating movement, helps to provide stimulation below the level of somebody's injury to the nervous system, and we hope that that will help them to recover. The exoskeleton is really beneficial also psychologically. To know that I can get up on my own feet and my own legs and begin to move. The fact that I will be walking on my own and this will get me there is absolutely, to me, the most critical part of my recovery. He was not the candidate to get into it. He doesn't have the arm strength. He didn't have the trunk strength. But my perspective working with these patients is that we should just try to see what we can do to tap into the potential. And the first session wasn't perfect, but he showed motivation. And so that was enough for us to decide that we just needed to continue trying. And by the second session, he got better. And by the third, he took off. It gave him a lot of confidence. It was the first time he could see objectively that he was making progress. All of a sudden, my numbers have gone from 80% machine, 20% from me. I'm down at times to 80% from me and 20% from machine. If I can continue with that, I'll be walking again. If I couldn't use the EXO, if it were not available, I would be really discouraged. I don't think it's too much to say I would be devastated because I've seen the improvement. I've seen the physical improvement and the emotional improvement that I get from using the EXO. And for that to go away would really be a serious setback to me. Without the exoskeleton, I don't think I'd be able to be making the gains that I'm making towards my own independence. <laughs> The XO is probably the best device that I have been on 
And to have a device like that here in Baltimore is an immense benefit to the community. This device is the one thing that gives me real hope. It's a very crucial piece of machinery to the future of spinal cord rehabilitation, and we have to have it here at Kennedy Krieger. We're gonna change the lives of, of hopefully every person that comes through the door. No one ever expects to be limited. No one ever expects to have a spinal cord injury. And you begin to realize what a difference hope makes. I can't wait for the day that I put the wheelchair away and never have to get in it again. And the fact that you can keep moving towards that goal without getting overly depressed, without just giving up, I think is the biggest gift of all. There was a time you let me know All the things you hoped for There was a time you let it show Are we not 